today I'm sharing my July makes. I actually have three things to share with you this month. Um, you will have seen a couple of them over on Instagram already, but it's always nice to see them, I think, anyway, um, on the person and on the movie and everything, so you can see what they actually look like in real life. Um, I cannot believe it is August next month. Where is this year going? It has just been an absolute whirlwind. July has been a really, really busy month for me. It has been my best month so far in my business, which is so exciting. Um, I'm pretty much on my target goal um, for my monthly income this month, which is just incredible, considering that um, a few months ago I wasn't sure how this was going to go. Um, so I have been really busy with that, so sewing hasn't been a top priority, uh, but I did have a few things I needed to sew this month, so I'm going to share those with you today. Also, finally feel like I found the perfect spot to film my videos in this house. I've been playing around with a few different locations, but I think this spot is absolutely perfect. The lighting is gorgeous, um, there's not a lot of glare, and it's really comfortable and quiet. So I think this is going to be my spot, which is very exciting. Project, which was either the Lander Pan and Short from True Bias or the Forsyth Trousers from Blake Slate Patterns. Now the Landers have been on my to sew list for a really, really long time. Um, not so much the pan version, but the short version definitely. Um, but obviously we're in the middle of winter, so making the shorts version now is just really pointless because I'm not going to be able to wear it for, you know, probably another two or three months. So I decided to go with the Forsyth Trousers. Now, I'm not really a pants girl. I don't make a lot of pants. You'll notice on this channel there aren't really a lot of pants that I share. Um, leggings every now and again. Um, but I much prefer wearing skirts and dresses. So to me, to find some pants that I'm really going to like wearing, there are a few things that um, I sort of need in a good pant. Um, and the thing that really attracted me to the Forsyth trousers was the gorgeous sash. I don't know that that's so crazy because it's such a um like it's made it really part of the pants you know it's just a separate pattern piece that you just slide through the belt loops but i just i really love the look of that i think it really suits my style having a bow like that um and so yeah i was really really excited to give them a go so i'm wearing them now but you're not going to be able to see them so i'll pop some footage in here for you to see them up close I absolutely love my Forsyth trousers and I know that I am going to get quite a lot of wear out of these. I'm so, so happy with them. So the Forsyth trousers are um, usually a wider leg um, pant with a cuff down the bottom or you can do the Capri style. The Capri? I think it's Capri style um, as well. So there are a couple of different options. I've also seen some people make some really cute Forsyth shorts, which I'm very interested in for summer with the little sash on there, but also some pajama bottoms out of the Forsyth trousers, and I think that works really, really well. Um, they're an elasticated trouser, so they actually are really good for um, if you haven't made fitted pants before, this would definitely be like a good first pattern to use. I haven't made fitted pants before, the closest I got was um, the Marigold jumpsuit by Tilly and the Buttons. Um, but yeah, I have never made like a fitted trouser before and this was really easy because it has the elasticated waistband. The waistband bit which can um, be a little bit problematic and I know a few people had trouble with the landers, um, whether to do the straight or the curved waistband. The elastic waistband just cuts all of that out, you don't have to worry about any of that because the elastic will conform to your body and make it fit perfectly. So. These are a really, really great starting point if you want to make some fitted trousers. Um, so there are some other really nice details about these pants that I love. The welt pockets, which were my first ever welt pockets, and I'm so, so happy with them. And um, they're not perfect, but for the first time, I'm pretty chuffed. Um, they were actually quite easy to do. I did um, follow the instructions that came with the pattern. Um, they also linked to a Melly Sews tutorial. Um, but I ended up also just having a look through um, the Landers, the Landers, the Forsyth trousers um, on the hashtag and just to understand this one bit which I was a bit confused about and that 
I'm a very visual person like that, so to see them um, made up worked it out for me. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with my welt pockets. I think they look quite good. Um, I almost didn't do them, so I only made these yesterday, and I finished them off this morning. And I was considering leaving out the welt pockets because I was like, oh, how hard is this going to be? Am I going to be out of my trousers in a day? You can. Um, so yeah, I almost left them out, but I'm so glad I did it because I think they're a really nice design feature and do make them look a lot more like, you know, proper trousers. Um, so yeah, I really like that. The other thing that I really love is the faux fly, which, yeah, I've never done a fly before or anything, so this was kind of a good, like, segue into them. Um, I just think it's a really nice design detail, and again, it makes them look more like proper, you know, tailored trousers. Um, so yeah, I really like that. And also the belt loops. I love how they've kind of done the belt loops and how they attach them to the waistband as well. I just think, yeah, they're really, really nice. So yeah, in terms of fabric, this is the clay soft, clay mud soft drill or something from the Remnant Warehouse. I was wanting to do them in a linen, but I couldn't find one in my price range. And I also didn't want to try these in a linen first. Um, so this was only $10 a metre, it was so cheap. Um, and yeah, these, this is actually a really beautiful drill. It's not like a hard drill, it is really soft. Um, this colour is a bit lighter than what it looks like in the photos actually on the website. So I was a little bit surprised when I opened it, but I actually really like this colour anyway. Um, I ordered two metres, but they, because they don't do half increments on the Remnant Warehouse, but it was so cheap that it didn't matter. Um, but they actually ended up giving me a bit more because it's the end of the roll. So I have quite a bit left over. So I'm planning on making um, the button-up skirt from Seamwork Magazine. And the name escapes me now, but I'll pop it down here. Um, that was one of the suggestions that I got on Instagram. And if I have enough left over, I'd really like to make some lander shorts out of it as well. So we shall see. But three garments out of something that cost me $20. So the only adjustments that I made to these pants were to bring the legs in quite significantly. I don't like wide leg things on me. Um, I just don't really like them. I don't wear a lot of wide leg things. I'm much more a skinny leg kind of girl. Um, so yeah, I tried them on inside out and then worked out how much I wanted to take in down the bottom, um, which ended up being, I think it was two and a half inches. Um, and then I just graded it up into the crotch seam. Um, so yeah, you don't really notice it at all. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the only adjustment I made. I made an extra, extra small. I didn't even bother checking my measurements, which was so bad, but I just needed to get them sewn. And it, uh, they do fit like quite well, but they are a bit tight. So I think next time I'll go up to an extra small. Um, they do have, um, you'll be able to see the footage, the kind of pull lines at the front. So um, the four staff trouser pattern does come with some great tips for how to adjust the pattern depending on what's wrong with it. Um, there is a suggestion in there. I think it's something to do with the crotch length. I'll have to look into it before my next pair. Um, but yeah, they're not that noticeable. With the sash, you don't really see it anyway, so I'm not too fussed. Um, but yeah, next time I definitely size up to an extra small because it is just a smidgy bit tight. So I'm definitely going to be making these again. I really wanted to do a pink linen pair, actually, like a dusty pink. But I didn't, and like I said, I didn't want to spend the money on the linen and a pink pair if I wasn't going to use it. But I think they'll be really cute for spring and I know that I'm definitely going to wear these pants. So I'm on the lookout for some dusty pink linen. trousers. This is the pleated neck blouse from Cartier Fabrics. Now Cartier Fabrics kindly contacted me a couple of months ago to see if I wanted to help promote their new fabric range um, and choose some fabric and a pattern as well which is very very generous of them. So yeah I chose the pleated neck blouse. I was just really drawn to the pleated neck feature. I thought it was just something so different to any of the patterns that I've got now um, and I just thought it looked really cool. Um, so originally I was thinking I would make this into more of a tunic style top, but actually I really like it this length. So the fabric I chose is this really beautiful mustard cotton. Um, it looks, 
a lot oranger actually in this picture. It's a really, really hard colour to capture properly. If you head on over to the blog, probably the pictures on there are a more true to life colour. Um, but yeah, it's a really hard colour to capture. It looked very yellow on their website. Um, and I'm not into yellow mustards, um, but this is definitely a true mustard. It just, yeah, it's coming up a little bit orange on camera. Um, but yeah, if you head on over to my blog, that's probably more, a more true to um, the actual colour. Um, so, this was a really, really quick make. The pleat is super easy, their instructions are really easy to follow, and it literally took me maybe a couple of hours from tracing off the pattern to cutting it out to sewing it um, all together. I do still need to hand stitch the sleeves and the hem as well, but there's a lot of it, <laughs> so I need a free night to be able to do that. Now, the only alteration that I made to this, I made the smallest size, didn't make any alterations apart from adding on a bell sleeve. So this is the sleeve pattern from Deer and Doe, my Sotus dress. I just felt like this top needed a little something extra to it, um, and I wasn't a huge fan of the sleeve length as it was, so I thought um, that the bell sleeve would look really, really cute. I'm so glad that I did. It just adds that extra element to this top, and I absolutely love it. Um, I will have inserted some close-ups here of the pleat for you. I do need to stitch that down a little bit better because I didn't go right to the end and now the stitches are undoing themselves. Um, yeah, this is really cute. It looks really nice with jeans and boots or like tights and boots. Um, and I just, yeah, I think it will be a really cute addition to my autumn and winter wardrobe. Um, it has been a little bit cold to wear it now only because I would need to wear a long sleeve top underneath and you can kind of see it through the sleeves. So, um, yeah, just need to wait for the weather to warm up a little bit, but this will be perfect for autumn. Um, Carty Fabrics have a huge range of patterns on their website and a huge range of really cute fabrics. Lots of kids orientated fabrics, especially their knits. So if you have a little one and you want to sew some stuff for them, make sure you go and check out their website. Fantastic customer service as well. This is the honeycomb dress from Coco Wild Crafts. Anna contacted me um, a little while ago to see if I wanted to be part of the blog tour for the honeycomb dress and of course I was more than happy to. I love her patterns, I've patent tested for her before and I just love how they always are a little bit different to what you'd see sort of in the mainstream um, and other indie patent companies as well. And the honeycomb dress is no different. So essentially the honeycomb is sort of a shirt dress, um, it has button placard right down into the waistline and then it goes into a gathered skirt. So nothing too complicated. One of the things that I really love about the Coco Wawa patterns is how many variations they have. So for example, this can be a shirt or a dress and it has three different sleeve length options. So no sleeves, which is what I've done. Um, short sleeves, which I think look super cute and I definitely want to do on my next version. Um, or long sleeves with a really cute little tie on the bottom of them as well. Um, so yeah, really, really easy. The um, shirt has a little prep look down the bottom, which is super cute. Um, and I really like to give that one a go too. I love patterns like that because it does feel like you're making something different each time you do it. So I decided to go for a sleeveless version. I just think that this dress out of this print is definitely going to be something I'm going to wear throughout spring and summer. I also thought that if I did it a bit shorter and did it sleeveless, it would look cute in winter with tights and boots um, and my little leather jacket. So um, I haven't been able to wear it yet because it has just been too cold, but I'm hoping as the weather starts to warm up, I'll be able to get some more wear out of this dress. So this absolutely stunning fabric, I have been asked so many times where this fabric is from, and it's actually from a Fabric D stash group. I have the link to the group in my profile um, on Instagram if you want to go and check it out. It's an Australian D stash group and actually I wasn't even planning on purchasing this. I was purchasing a couple of other bits and pieces from this lady um, and she said, oh, if you're purchasing those, you might like this. And in the photo, it looked kind of like a grey kind of colour. Like it looked really nice and I was like, oh, she said, oh, don't worry about the colour. It's a lot more like dusty pink. Um, it's not showing up as well on camera. I was like, okay, fine, I like, throw it in. And then I was like, no, that's enough now. I need to not purchase anymore. And when I got the package and opened it up, I was so surprised with how beautiful this fabric is. So it has a gorgeous drape. I don't actually know what it is. 
It kind of feels a little bit like a rail, but it's not quite as thin as a rail. It does have a little bit of structure to it, which works really well for this dress. Um, and I just, I adore the colour and the black splodgy bits on there too. I just think it's gorgeous. And I've had so many comments, but I'm really sorry guys. I don't know where this is from, so I don't think you're going to be able to get it. So a couple of things I really like about the honeycomb dress. Number one are the princess seams on the front. I love them. I just feel like they're super flattering. Um, and the reason they are princess seams is because there are side ties which bring the dress in. So it is quite a flowy, floaty dress. And this is perfect um, for spring and summer. You know, if you're in summer and you want it to be a little bit more chilled and not so structured. Um, but I really like it because I can have a cinched in waist. You guys you know how much I love a cinched in waist. So that's really cute. Um, See, so yeah, I'd really versatile too if you're pregnant. Um, it would, this would be a great maternity dress, breastfeeding friendly, um, and just really easy to wear as well. So yeah, this would definitely be a great maternity pattern. Um, the other thing that I really like about this is the little collar. Um, this is like the best collar I've ever done, this little banded collar. Now, it's not perfect, and I'm getting better at them each time, but yeah, this would have to be definitely one of the best ones that I've done. Um, it is supposed to have a button on here so that you can button it up like this, but personally, that's not really my style, um, so I've left that one off. I also do have a top button here, which does, like, work, but I do quite like it being a bit more open, um, so that's kind of how I tend to wear it. Now, this is the smaller size, and it does fit me quite well, although it is probably a little bit big. Um, but that's okay, it's not supposed to be like a tight fit dress anyway. Um, and because of the ties, it works quite well. One thing that I did forget to do, though, was to take my one inch off of the bodice to bring the um, waistline up, which is something that I need to remember to do for all of my bodices, because, yeah, I'm a bit shorter, and I found that if I take the one inch off, that's perfect to get it to sit to my higher natural waist. So I did forget to do that, but again, with the cinching in of the waist, it doesn't matter quite so much. Um, I also chopped off quite a bit of length for this pattern because I wanted it a bit shorter. That midi kind of just below the knee look on me doesn't work so well. Um, I just find that shorter things look a little bit better on me um, and I prefer that length. So I did chop quite a bit off, I can't remember how much now. Um, but yeah, I sort of needed to anyway because I didn't have, I had enough fabric for this dress but yeah, it was a bit of a tight squeeze. Also, you'll notice that I've done black buttons this time and not wooden buttons. Yay, I moved on. I also I bought like a whole heap of buttons from this lady on this fabric de-stash group that I mean it was, I think it was $6 and there's heaps on there. It was only $3 post, so it's $10 for all of these buttons, which is super handy. Um, so I do have a little bit more of a selection now that's not just my wooden ones. Um, but unfortunately I only had three, but luckily three worked for me, so it's not such a big deal. Um, like I said, I've got this one, but because I didn't want the top one, um, the four didn't worry me too much. So I'm really, really stoked with this dress, and I know I'm gonna get so much wear out of this over summer. So I do have one other pattern for this month, but I can't share it with you yet because it is a pattern test, but it's super cute and super simple, so I can't wait to share that with you sometime during August. Okay, that's it for me, guys. I hope you liked this video. I'll be back next week with my August sewing plans. Oh my God, I cannot believe we're thinking about August already. I have some really cute ideas for next month, so I can't wait to share those with you. As always, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week. Bye.